The concept of transformation is something that I don't think gets enough play in our current society. It's a concept that I've become very interested in over my last year. And I think that it's continually shaped because we are always transforming for our own experiences. Simply put, what a transformation is, is something changing, profoundly changing. A change that actually goes to its core and affects its function. You are on the brink of a major transformation. And I believe that that is met with a certain amount of energy, optimism, but also some anxiety. I'm going to ask you today to think about the personal transformation that will occur over the next year, but also ask you to take a look at your classrooms and think about the classroom transformation that has to occur as well. When I accepted a position in the Fond du Lac School District, I was leading a well-established music program for something that my principal stated was on life support. The students weren't that involved, and if they weren't involved, they weren't learning. I had a nice track record that I was bringing into the school district of, of energizing the program, but what if everything that I accomplished in the past was just a matter of luck? My first year at Woodworth was easily the most challenging, but also rewarding years of my career. The program I inherited transformed. The very function of band at Woodworth Middle School changed. The band wasn't about playing cute songs anymore. It was about understanding the world through music. It was about emotionally and personally connecting students to science, history, and social problems. It was about personal exploration, creativity, critical thinking, and collaboration. Numbers skyrocketed, community interest soared, even press coverage. But none of that would be possible if I didn't teach the part of every one of my students. So what sort of transformation will take place in your classrooms? What sort of improvements in student learning will you make? I'd like to take some time to share some thoughts that I have about the profound transformation that teaching has been I call it teaching to the heart, and I believe that this concept alone had, had allowed me to be very successful in the final school district. We can't get around this issue. Human communities rely on a diversity of talent, not a singular conception of ability. This is something that was taught to me by Sir Ken Robinson, and I think it bears repeating. Human communities rely on a diversity of talent not a single conception of ability. So how do we teach to this diversity of talent while still maintaining the scope of standards within our classroom? The answer is that we teach for students' hearts. It means that we make sure that students' individual interests are nurtured. It means we make sure that we teach to our students' strengths. Now, of course there's standards, and we teach those as well. But what we'll also do is create an environment where every student wants to do school. Because it won't be about learning the quadratic formula. It won't be about learning It'll be about solving problems, problems that are interesting and engaging to those students through the wide net form and through the theory of the So, if teaching for the heart is contagious, it begins with me. It begins with you. My wife and I had a very interesting experience with the recent work. We had to take our three-month-old daughter uh, to a surgical consult at the Children's Hospital in Wisconsin. Now, as soon as I say that, I have to point out that she's totally fine. But everyone was watching and concerned about her daughter being in harmless. We didn't know that going on. So you can understand as parents how concerned and anxious we were. As soon as the doctor walked into the exam room, everything changed. The room transformed. Not only by his expertise, and he was phenomenal, but by his empathy and by his care. And in fact, every single person that we came in contact with at the Children's Hospital was phenomenal. Of course, they were great at what they did as doctors, but they also had tremendous empathy and care. It was like Disneyland for doctors. Now your classroom needs to go through the same transformation. It needs to become a better place because you are in it. Students and parents should be inspired, not only by your expertise or teacher talent, as Mr. Nault would say, but also by your empathy and by your care. Let your classroom be a Disney one to learn. Teaching to the heart means that if we're there, we show them care. You pick the profession, you don't get to grocery shop and animate. You need to care outside of your classroom just as much as you care. But halfway through my first year at Woodworth, uh, it occurred spirit, and this is pretty much like a glorified homecoming for middle school. Now, I was asked to serve on, on some athletic contest between staff and students. And my athletic experience in school pretty much went like this. I put on the basketball team. Um, <laughs> and, and pretty much, I had to be the secret weapon. And that's how I looked at it because I never got into the game. I didn't start the game, but 
I never got in until we were down by about 40 points. <laughs> and, and the coach would, would turn to me on the bench and be like, McVay, get in there. And I'd always be like, yeah, I got this one, coach. No <laughs> That's, I mean, that, that was the plan. I had to think that that was the plan, but it, it never seemed to work out, I guess. So I was, I was a little nervous. I mean, you've been playing basketball and volleyball against middle schoolers. I was a little nervous. Um, I'm not in the greatest shape. I was out there with mismatched socks, shoes with no traction, playing volleyball. The next day, I was actually running up and down the court, chasing down eighth graders that are literally running circles around me. And I was actually getting physically sick to my stomach because of how exhausted I was. But none of that mattered. It didn't matter how, how many layups or free throws I missed. The bottom line was I was taking time to make a fool out of, no, I'm sorry, to invest myself in something that was important to students. It wasn't like, hey, look, you're in my classroom, and I care about you only because you're in my classroom. It wasn't that at all. What it was is, hey, look, I care about you as an individual. And because of that, this is important to you, and I'm going to invest myself in it to make sure that it's upstanding. I, I believe that that also changed my relationship with students and allowed me to be a better teacher because I can connect with them personally. If you're there, you've got to show them care. 